Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to unbox and review this OWC Express 1M2 Thunderbolt 4 NVMe M.2 enclosure. This enclosure by a company called Otherworld Computing is meant to provide a fast external storage solution for your computer. It is designed for USB-C Thunderbolt 4 but the marketed real world speeds are about 3150 megabytes per second. I intend to use this M.2 enclosure with the base M4 Mac Mini which I recently reviewed. If you haven't watched that video, please do and share your opinions in the comment section. Let's proceed with the unboxing. Out of the box, we have the enclosure itself. A one foot Thunderbolt 4 USB-C cable. A small Phillips screwdriver. And finally, a rubber foot which covers the screws after installing the drive. Right off the bat, this is a chunky enclosure made out of solid aluminium casing. The casing is meant to dissipate as off as much heat as possible and keep the drive inside within operating temperature. It has a heat sink like fin design to maximize surface area for optimal heat dissipation. Owing to its aluminium body, the enclosure feels a bit heavy than other typical single NVMe enclosures. The enclosure measures about 13 centimeters in length by 7 centimeters in width by about 2 centimeters in height. At the front, we have an LED indicator which illuminates solid white when Thunderbolt 4 connection is detected and blinks during drive activity. Over at the back, we have a single USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port and a screw hole meant for a Klingon stabilizer. The Klingon stabilizer is sold separately and is meant to stabilize the connection by minimizing wiggling of the connected Type-C cable. This M.2 enclosure is available in five versions starting at $120. We have the 0TB version for installing your own NVMe drive and versions with pre-installed storage of 1TB, 2TB, 4TB and 8TB. What we have here is the 0TB model into which I will be installing this Samsung 980 Pro 1TB NVMe drive. Now let's open it up and install the drive. After removing the screws, slide the bottom piece up and off and set the top aside. As you can see, this enclosure supports the 2230, 2242 and 2280 NVMe form factors. Now let's unbox our Samsung drive and prepare it for installation. This is the Samsung 980 Pro 1TB SSD that we are going to install. The drive is PCIe 4.0 and supports read speeds of up to 7000 megabytes per second and write speeds of up to 5000 megabytes per second. However, in our enclosure, we expect a maximum of 3000 megabytes per second of read and write. We shall do a speed test later in the video. Since our drive has the 2280 form factor, it is going to be secured at the farthest screw stand labeled 2280. But before we install the drive, we need to remove this small screw which as you can see is by default set at the mounting point for the 2280 form factor. To install the drive, we need to first slide it into this socket while observing the orientation of the pin on the socket and the notch 
on the drive itself. It's always advisable to hold the drive by the edges to avoid leaving skin oil on the thermal surface which might adversely affect heat transfer to the casing. Push it gently. Now we need to use the screw we removed earlier to hold it in place. Before we put the top casing back, note that there are two thermal pads prefitted. These thermal pads facilitate transfer of heat from the drive and chipset onto the aluminium enclosure and therefore are not meant to be removed. These thermal pads are not covered in the typical pillable plastic. We are going to put the top and bottom parts of the enclosure back together in the same manner we took it apart. Take note of the tabs on the bottom enclosure and the lips on the top enclosure. These two are supposed to interlock. Slide the bottom piece into the top, ensuring that the two tabs on the bottom piece lock into the lip of the top case. Apply some force on the enclosure to ensure that the thermal pad gets good contact with the SSD. Finally, secure the two halves with the bottom screws before applying the rubber feet that was provided. And just like that, our drive is now ready for use. Using the provided cable, let us connect the enclosure to one of the three Thunderbolt 4 ports at the back of the base M4 Mac Mini. After connecting the drive to the Mac, we need to first format the drive to the Apple file system for optimum performance. Before we do a speed test of the new external drive, let me first show you the read and write speed of the 256 GB internal drive. As you can see, the average speed of the internal drive is about 2000 megabytes per second for writes and approximately 3000 megabytes per second for reads. Let's proceed to do the test on the external drive which we renamed to OWC during formatting. You can see that the write speed of the SSD in the OWC enclosure is about 1000 megabytes per second faster than the internal drive. The enclosure easily achieves the advertised speed of 3150 megabytes per second. While conducting a couple more speed tests to confirm the numbers, the Blackmagic software suddenly froze and the drive self ejected and then reconnected itself. Well guys, things took a different turn. While copying some files over to the new drive, I received a copy error and discovered that the drive had disconnected itself. I didn't mind it at first. 
I reconnected the enclosure and copied the files successfully. Later on, while doing speed tests for this video, I noted that some tests were successful, giving us the expected speeds of about 3,100 megabytes per second of read and write, but in other tests, the Blackmagic software froze up with the infamous spinning ball. It then dawned to me that the enclosure was disconnecting from the Mac randomly and the only way to reconnect is to unplug and replug the cable or restart the Mac Mini altogether. I tried a different M.2 NVMe drive. This 2TB Patriot Viper V P4300 Gen4 SSD, but the disconnects persisted. Additionally, I swapped the provided USB-C Thunderbolt 4 cable with this high-end Thunderbolt 4 cable by Cable Matters, but that did not fix the issue either. I also swapped across all three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back of the Mac Mini without success. However, the enclosure works well with my Windows PC without disconnecting. For this reason, I suspect that this enclosure probably draws more power than the Mac Mini can provide. Quite a number of users on the Mac Mini subreddit confirm having disconnect issues with Thunderbolt 4 NVMe enclosures in Mac systems. The fact that it works okay on a Windows PC implies that the disconnects are not due to overheating. Otherwise, it would have disconnected or froze randomly on the Windows PC as it did on the Mac. It is quite a bummer when a hyped product doesn't work well as expected. However, this does not mean that OWC makes poor quality products. Their enclosures and hubs are actually very well regarded. It's possible that I just received a defective unit. So I'll reach out to OWC and see if they can assist or offer a replacement. Now, would I recommend this enclosure? Yes, but primarily based on other reviews and the fact that it achieves the advertised speeds. However, I suggest purchasing it from a retailer with a good return policy, just in case it does not perform as expected. This advice applies to all electronics as occasional failures, though rare, can occur. For now, I will repurpose this SSD for use in a NAS while waiting for feedback from OWC support. This is quite an unexpected way of wrapping up this video, but it happens. Let me know in the comments what you suspect the problem is. Thanks for watching and cheers!